J-E-L-L-O. The Jell-O program starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston and Phil Harris and his orchestra. The orchestra opens the program with plenty of money and you from the gold diggers of 1937. feeling about these late autumn days, a feeling of joy and gratitude, the spirit of thanksgiving. The big day we've all been anticipating is almost here at last, and you will probably be so busy from now on planning your family celebration that until Thursday you'll want to serve simple, easily prepared meals, and there isn't anything easier to make or more enjoyable to eat than Jell-O. Of course, Jell-O can be dressed up to be just as fancy as you please, but it's still delicious still wonderfully satisfying and refreshing when it's served perfectly plain. Because no matter how you serve Jell-O, that extra rich flavor is always there, a flavor that comes from fresh, ripe fruit. No other gelatin dessert can equal Jell-O's extra rich flavor. So always remember that there is only one Jell-O. Get the real thing, insist on genuine Jell-O. gentlemen, we bring to you your friend, my friend, and Jack Benny's friend, Jack Benny. <laughs> Hello again, this is Jack's pal talking. Uh, Don, I wouldn't care how you introduce me tonight, you can kid me all you want to. I feel too good, full of pep and everything. Oh, you do? Yes, sir. Well, tell me, Jack, what's the cause of your exhilaration and sparkling effervescence? Well, I, uh, what was that, Don? <laughs> I say, what's the cause of your exhilaration and sparkling effervescence? I don't... Well, what motivates this sudden display of exuberance? Well, I, uh... In I... other words, Jack, uh, what makes you so gay? Oh, I was hoping we'd get together. <laughs> well, Don, you know how tired I've been the last couple of weeks, so I went down to Palm Springs for a rest, and it did me a lot of good. You know, that desert sun is a real tonic. Well, I must say, you look greatly improved. Why, even the circles under your eyes are tanned. <laughs> <laughs> they do look better, don't they, Don? Uh, where did you stop in Palm Springs, Jack? Well, I didn't know where to go. You know, there are so many swanky hotels. There's the Colonial House, a beautiful spot, and the Desert Inn, and the El Mirador, very exclusive. So I finally decided on the El Mirador. Oh, you did? Yes, I parked my trailer right on their front lawn. <laughs> Why, Jack, you can't park a trailer in front of a high-class hotel like that. <laughs> Not for any length of time, I mean. I found that out. So I met Mary down there. I didn't even know she was coming. Well, uh, Jack, while you were there, did you go in for a lot of outdoor sports? Uh, yes, Don. I was quite active. I used to get up at 5 o'clock in the morning and watch everybody take a cold plunge. Then a little later, I'd go out of the golf course and watch a few rounds of golf. Then in the afternoon, I'd watch them ride horseback through the hills. Uh, did you watch anyone play tennis? Uh, no, Don. That would have been a little too strenuous. <laughs> You know, lazy is the word for Jackie. And hello is the word for Mary. Mm. Hello, Jack. Oh, hello, Mary. Did you have a good time at Palm Springs? Did I? Gee, that's a swell place. Where did you live there, Mary? At the El Mirador Hotel. And what scenery? I had a beautiful room facing Jack's trailer. <laughs> <laughs> oh, did that annoy you? Only when you stuck your head out. Well, I had to get a little sun. <laughs> uh, Jack tells me that he had trouble keeping his trailer in front of the hotel, Mary. Oh, they didn't object to that so much. Of course not. But they got pretty sore when he hung his wash in the lobby. <laughs> well, I just wanted to be neighborly, that's all. Uh, Jack, do you think you'll go back to Palm Springs next week? Uh, no, Don, I want to be here for Thanksgiving. You see, I bought a great big fat turkey. Nothing personal, of course. I'm... And I, uh... <laughs> How do you like that? <laughs> Stick to the script. I think and I, uh... <laughs> no, really, I, uh... No, really, I bought a big, fat turkey, and I, I want to be, be right here to eat it. <laughs> oh, a big, fat turkey. <laughs> well, did you get any trimmings? No, I made a good deal. I'm pretty sharp at those things. <laughs> uh, say, Jack, is next Thursday Thanksgiving? Yes, Mary, why? <clears throat> 
Oh, Thanksgiving. Oh, Thanksgiving. Now, wait a minute. Wait, I thought you weren't going to write any poems this season. Oh, just this one. No, no, we've had enough of them. Oh, Jack, let her do it. No. <laughs> All right, folks, you made your applause. Now lie in it. Go ahead, Mary. No, now you'll have to coax me. Well, uh... Oh, Thanksgiving. <laughs> oh, Thanksgiving. You are sure my favorite day. How I love your festive spirit. Gosh, gee whiz. Oh, boy, I'll say. Well, you asked for it. <laughs> Thanksgiving, you are sure a treat. How we love to eat and eat. Cause for dinner, we're sure there is turkey stuffing and cranberries. <laughs> I knew it. Uh, Mary, try to get Jello in there someplace. I will. Yeah. Your friends, they sit around the table and eat much more than they are able. Then your relatives, they come, and what's left over, they take hum. Take hum? Don't forget, Mary. Oh, you do it, Don. Okay. But your dinner's not complete without Jello, rich and sweet, and its flavor's so delicious. Uh, uh, and its flavor's so delicious. Are you stuck, Don? Uh, no, no, I'll get it. And its flavor's so delicious. Eat it there or take it with you. <laughs> hey, that's pretty good. Yes, sir. Mary, that was fine. I owe you an apology. Answer the phone, Mary. Hello? Yes? Oh, hello, Aunt Ruby. Yes? I don't know. I'll ask him. Say, Jack. What? Uh, Aunt Ruby asked me to invite you and your turkey over for Thanksgiving dinner. Uh, well, tell her I have another date. Hello? Aunt Ruby? Jack can't come to dinner Thanksgiving. What? Yes, all right. Goodbye. Now what? She says just have the turkey come over. Oh, yeah? Well, the turkey's going with me. Oh, Phil? Hey, Phil. Uh, Phil isn't here yet, Jack. He isn't? Well, no. The boys had to play the first tune without him. Hmm, that's funny. He's never been late before. Oh, well, I know enough about music to direct the next number. Uh, hand me that stick, will you, Don? Yes, here you are. All right, come on now, boys. Now, all together. One, two... Boys, look. I said one, two... You got the stick upside down. Oh. <laughs> now, look, boys, when I hold a stick up in the air like this, I want you to... Hey, wait for me! Wait for me! Two button your shoe from the motion picture Penny from Heaven, played by Phil Harris's orchestra with Jack Benny directing and doing okay. Hey, you finished late. Well, I started late. Oh. <laughs> you know, Don, I can't understand Phil doing a thing like this. He's always been here on time. I hope he's not out of town. Why, he can't be. I saw him at the Clover Club about 9.30 last night with a blonde. With a blonde, huh? Mm -hmm. Say, that reminds me. I saw him last night about 11 o'clock at the Coconut Grove, and he was with a brunette. He was? Yeah. I wonder what color Harry's with now. 
Say, that Phil is quite a ladies' man. Not that I care, but I don't want it to interfere with this program, that's all. Well, uh, perhaps Mr. Blue, his arranger, knows where he is. That's right. Hey, Ben, you don't happen to know where Phil is, do you? Well, the last time I saw him was Friday night. Uh -huh. He was at the Trocadero, and he had a beautiful red redhead with him. Mm -hmm. And she was sitting on his lap. <laughs> Well, I, I don't care about last night, you know. Well, I do, Mr. Bennett, because she was my redhead. <laughs> well, see if you can find her. And that guy Harris pays more attention to girls than he does to his job. Why don't you fire him, Jack? Oh, I wouldn't do that. He's a nice fellow and a likable character. Besides, he's got an iron-bound contract. <laughs> Hello, fellas. Oh, well, okay. Uh, congratulate me. I just won a 20-pound turkey in a raffle. Not so loud. Mary's aunt will invite it to dinner. <laughs> Say, Kenny, did you see Phil anywhere? Oh, I saw him Thursday night. He was, a brown, he was at the Brown Derby with the prettiest girl. Cece was cute. Oh, yeah? What color hair did she have? Oh, he wouldn't know. I do, too. It was sort of a plaid. <laughs> a little Scotch girl, huh? <laughs> Well, wait till he comes in, that's all. When girls start to interfere with this program, something's got to be done about it. You're not jealous of him, are you? No, say I do pretty good myself. Just want a little discipline on this program. People coming to work on time. It's not jealousy. Then stop turning green. So I'm not turning green. Yeah, if you had yeah. three leaves, you'd be a shamrock. Is that so? Gee, that's clever. How, How do you, do you know? know? Stay out of this, Kenny. Hey, uh, hey, Jack, Jack, here comes Phil now. Well, that's nice of him. Maybe he dropped in for tea. How are you, fellas? Hi, Jack. Well, it was sweet of you to stop in, Mr. Gable. <laughs> What's the big idea? Oh, nothing. Only if I had known you were coming, we would have baked a blonde. I mean, a cake. <laughs> I still don't get you. Now, listen, Phil. I'm a pretty regular fella, and I don't care anything about your private life, which seems to be quite public. But an artist must maintain a certain amount of dignity. But I didn't do it. Why, anything. what would people think if they saw me out with a half a dozen different girls? They'd think you were Phil Harris. <laughs> Go away. Now, Phil, when this program's on, you gotta be here on time. All right, Jack, I'm sorry. Of course, in all fairness to you, it's not your fault as much as it is the girls. Give me their phone numbers. I'll tell them a thing or two. Oh, no. <laughs> Well, just don't let it happen again, that's all. You ready for your song, Kenny? Yes, Mr. Benny. Well, go ahead. <laughs> Play it, Phil. You have nothing else to do. You girls, I can get more dates than he can, believe me. <laughs> I've never met your lips in sweet caress Your hand has never touched my hand With thrilling tenderness You never spoke of love to me But still somehow I know For love has made me one your eyes have told me so I saw your eyes, your wonderful eyes With love, light, and tenderness They thrilled me through, they filled Wonderful dreams I am dreaming No need to seek No more shall I seek For my heart has taught me that meaning And love
Yes, sir. <laughs> that was Kenny Baker singing Your Eyes Have Told Me So, accompanied by Don Juan and his orchestra. <laughs> Look at him there, the great lover. Standing there with that green shirt, yellow tie, and that silly look on his face. Say, I can wear a green shirt and a yellow tie, too. You've got the silly look. <laughs> oh, yeah? I bet he thinks I'm jealous. I can sit down on the phone right now and call ten girls. That's nothing. Phil mm. can sit down on the phone and have ten girls call him. Oh, he can, huh? Thanks, Mary. What are you doing tonight? It's a date. <laughs> We're quick, huh? And now, uh, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, as you all know, last Sunday night, we started a Western sketch which was thoughtlessly interrupted by our tenor singer, Mr. Baker, when he roller skated down Hollywood Boulevard upsetting a push cart in our play. So tonight, if I can get a little cooperation from the members of this company, we will proceed with our Western drama entitled Buck Benny Rides Again, or One Man on a Horse. <laughs> now, as you may remember... Uh, there's the phone. I'll take it. Hello? Yes? Who? Oh, hello, Miss Lombard. It's Carol Lombard, fellas. Yes? Yes, Miss Lombard. You want to speak to Phil Harris? Oh, sure, he's here. Oh, uh, Miss Lombard, I want to tell you how much I enjoy your work on the screen. I thought your last picture was just... Oh, Phil Harris. Uh, yes. <laughs> For you, rat. <laughs> hello Oh, hello, Carol How are you, honey? Hmm. Well, I'm sorry, dear, but I had a previous engagement and I just couldn't get away Come on, Phil, you're holding up the program What's that, Carol? All right, how about tomorrow night, sugar? Hmm. Yeah, honey Sugar, honey, what's he doing, ordering groceries? <laughs> yes, Carol, sure I will All right, dear Hey, Phil, let me talk to her a minute, will you? I'll be there at 8 o'clock sharp. Yes, honey. Let me talk to her a second. Huh? Oh, Carol, Jack Benny wants to talk to you. Here you are, Jack. Uh, hello, Carol. This is Jackie. <laughs> I, uh, I just wanted to... Uh, hello? 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 I guess we were disconnected. <laughs> 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 You know, these cheap Hollywood phones. <laughs> well, anyway, folks, our play, which we started last week, will go on immediately after the next number. Play, Carol. I mean, Phil. <laughs> Mary, Mary, find out what's the matter with this phone, will you? I'm Sorry, Dear, played by Casanova Harris and his orchestra. <laughs> and now for our Western drama, Buck Benny Rides Again. I will play the part of Sheriff Buck Benny, as tough an hombre as ever stepped into a pair of boots. 
a rootin', tootin', shootin', highfalutin', snootin', bootin'. Well, that gives you a rough idea. <laughs> the opening scene is the office of the sheriff of Cactus County. Jeeves, my shaft. <laughs> Curtain. <laughs> Music. Yum dum da dum da dum da dee. Yum dum dee dum da dee. Morning, boys. Morning, sir. Hi, Buck. Anything happened last night? Well, uh, Three Fingered Joe broke into the First National Bank. Mm -hmm. Alkali Ike stuck up the Citizens Bank, and Cactus Pete robbed the Merchants Bank. Oh, bank night, huh? <laughs> Sheriff, your card. Smile when you say that. <laughs> Go into the jailhouse and feed the prisoners. I can't. They're all dining out this morning. Well, I don't blame them. The food's awful here. Never should have pardoned our old cook. You know, Buck, there's been too much shooting and killing going on around here lately. What's the population of this here town, anyhow? 305. <laughs> 302. <laughs> Pretty tough town. Man's got to commit suicide here to die a natural death. <laughs> Better get those prisoners back here, deputy. Well, if you'd have served them jello like I told you to, they wouldn't be eaten out. Yes, you're right. Why, everybody knows that jello is the finest gelatin dessert in the world, and every day millions of people. 301. <laughs> well. <laughs> well, he was a good man, but he talked too much. <laughs> Gotta have strong, silent men in these here parts. Ain't that right, deputy? I ain't saying. <laughs> well, I don't blame you. Answer the phone. Hello? Yes? It's for you, Sheriff. It's Daisy Carson. Hmm. Hello, Daisy. Anything wrong? What? They stole your pappy's cows. Tell your pappy I'll be right over. Goodbye. <laughs> Mm, more trouble. Those cattle rustlers are at it again. They got Frank Carson's cows. Come on, deputy. We got to get going. Where's my gun? In your hand. Mm. Thought it was my pipe. I've been smoking it for an hour. <laughs> well, come on. Round up the boys and saddle the horses. We're heading for Carson's house. Where is it? Right across the street. Come on. Yeah! Tall, dark, and knock-kneed. Can't help it. Just got off a thin horse. Where's your pappy? He's down in the cyclone cellar reading Gone with the Wind. <laughs> well, tell him I'm here. Hey, pappy, the sheriff's awaiting. I'll be right up. Daisy, you sure look pretty tonight. What with your golden hair and teeth to match. Jack Buck, the way you talk, it'd make a gal plum blushy. No, oh, reckon I'm just poetic, that's all. What's that? Smells like brandy. Here comes Pappy now. <laughs> Hello, Frank. Hello, Buck. <laughs> what you giggling about? That you thought I was going to say Frank Buck. <laughs> Wish you had. Would have been a powerful laugh. <laughs> Say, Frank, Daisy phoned me that the rustlers got away with all your cows. Got any idea who took them? Yes, I have. It was Rattlesnake Rollo. Oh, yeah? Well, I've been a hankering to meet that hombre for some time. Got your cows branded? No. Well, how will I know them? I got a slave bracelet on each leg. <laughs> I know you, but how about the cows? <laughs> Come in. Oh, Sheriff. Sheriff. What's up? 
I just saw Rattlesnake Rolla heading towards Red River Canyon. You did? Did he have any cattle with him? Oh, yes. I tried to stop him, but he stuck a big gun in my ribs. And things like that sort of depressed me. <laughs> Red River Canyon, eh? Well, that's where that barman is hiding those cattle. Come on with me, Carson, and we'll get your cows back. I'm heading for Red River Canyon. Buck Benny rides again. Hooray! Thank you. <laughs> Come on, Carson. We ain't got a minute to lose. I'll answer that phone. Hello. Who? Ginger Rogers. You want to speak to Phil Harris? <laughs> now, look, Miss Rogers, we can't stop this. What? Well, we're right in the middle of our... Oh, all right. It's for you, Phil, and hurry up. See you later. Hello. Right in the middle of it. Oh, hello, Gingy. <laughs> How are you, sweet? Hmm. Oh, nothing, honey. Why? Come on, Phil. We've got to get those cows. <laughs> what? What's that, Gingy? Oh, no kidding. Oh, come on, Phil. Buck Benny rides again! <laughs> wait a minute, wait a minute, Jack. Not so loud. Hurry up, we gotta go after those cows. Listen, Ginger, I'll be through in a few minutes. Oh. Can I drop by and pick you up? Oh, Phil. I'll tell you what, dear. Meet me at 10 o'clock at the Palomar. Come on, Buck Benny rides again! <laughs> okay, honey. Come on, come on, Phil. Yes, yes, honey. Yes, I know. All right, dear. Well, I gotta rush now. Yes, darling. Well, I can't help it. I'm in a hurry. I'm sorry, dear, but I have to rush. Yeah, you can take your time, Phil. The cows came back. <laughs> Buck Benny rides again. Playboy. One more thing you can be thankful for this year, Jell-O chocolate pudding, the new modern way to make grand old-fashioned chocolate pudding. It's easy, inexpensive, and just as delicious as any chocolate pudding you ever remember tasting. Jell-O chocolate pudding is smoother, creamier, more chocolatey, and it's crammed with plenty of swell homemade flavor. This is how you make it. Simply mix the contents of one package with some milk in the top of your double boiler. When the mixture becomes thick and luscious, take it off the fire, and then, after it's cooled, serve it in sherbet glasses. That's all you have to do to get a rich, delicious sherbet and dessert that will go down in your family's history as one of the best. Jell-O chocolate pudding sells for the same low price as Jell-O, and with one package, you can make enough for six servings. So don't hold out on your family. Get some Jell-O chocolate pudding from your grocer in the morning. If he hasn't put it in stock yet, be sure he orders it for you. number of the eighth program in the new Jell-O series, and we'll be with you again next Sunday night at the same time. I hope you've all enjoyed as far as I could get with our Western sketch. Hey, Mary, wait for me. I'll call a taxi and take you home. Buck Benny rides again. Yes, come. Good night, folks. <laughs> from Jerome Kern Sunny. This program has come to you from the NBC studios in Hollywood. This is the Red Network of the National Broadcasting Company. KFI Los Angeles, Earl C. Anthony, Incorporated.